In this video, we'll be taking a look at a number of Pro Tools shortcuts and workflows which can greatly help to speed up your mixing and editing. Now, there are hundreds of shortcuts in Pro Tools, but the aim here is to focus on a few of the most useful ones which will hopefully help to save you a lot of time while you're working. This video is aimed at people who are fairly new to Pro Tools, but you might still find it useful if you're a seasoned veteran because there may be something in here which you've overlooked or just never used. I'll stick to the features which are available in both standard and the HD versions of the software. So we'll start off with some of the single keystroke commands which can be found on the middle row of your computer keyboard, keys A to G. Okay, so here I've got a piece of music and it's part of a post-production mix and if I want to trim the start of this as long as I have this switched on which is commands focus I can use the single keystroke commands from the keyboard so I've got the cursor parked here if that's the point where I want it to actually come in maybe there then I can just press the letter A so A trims the start of the clip to the cursor let's say that I now want to trim the end of it to there well that's straightforward enough just press S so A trims the start to the cursor S trims the end Next we're going to move on to the letters D, F and G which all relate to fades. If I part the cursor here and I want to fade the clip in from the start to the cursor, that's D. If I want to fade from the cursor to the end of the clip, that's G. So that leaves us with the letter F and this would be used if, for example, if I just delete a section here, if I wanted to crossfade something, I could make a selection that encompasses the range which I want to actually apply the fade and just press the letter F. Now you can of course go in and modify that afterwards if you want to, which is straightforward enough, either by manually editing it with something like the trim tool, or you can double click it and you can change various attributes. Next up is not so much a keyboard shortcut, but a workflow shortcut relating to creating a reverb send. So take for example this short section of dialogue. And then I had to kind of like, you know, re be apologetic, but I didn't mean to. First I'm going to show you the long-winded way, and I've seen so many people doing this, but there's a much quicker way. So the lengthy way of adding reverb to that, apart from of course applying the reverb directly on the track and, and adjusting the wet-dry balance. So let's say you want to do it as a send. Here's the way which takes several clicks. So you might choose to send this down. I'll do it as stereo reverb, so uh, a pair of buses, and then you might rename that. Just call it reverb. And then you might create a stereo auxiliary input. Maybe I'll solo save that by command clicking it and then put the reverb on it. And then of course you have to set the input to take its input from that particular bus. And now you can actually increase the reverb sound. And then I had to kind of like, you know, re be apologetic, but I didn't mean to. And yeah, we've got to the end result, but we've clicked several times, unnecessarily really. So let's just get rid of that. Okay, and I'll just show you a quicker way of doing it. So again, I'm going to click on the send, but this time, rather than sending it down an existing bus, I'm just going to choose new track. Uh, make sure it's a stereo auxiliary input. I'll just call this reverb new. And now what will happen is it will create not only the send with a name, which is, you know, according to whatever I've just named it, but it will also create the auxiliary, which has the name both on the track name and on the actual bus itself. Then it's just a question of simply adding the reverb plugin to it. Let's just choose a different one. And there you go. And then I had to kind of like, you know, re be apologetic, but I didn't mean to. Next, we'll talk about accessing automation lanes. So take, for example, this 7-band EQ. If I wanted to automate the uh, high-mid frequency control, obviously I could do it in real time, but let's say I wanted to do it by uh, adjusting the actual automation lane itself. Well, I could go to the track view selector, I could find the plugin in question and I could track down that particular control which could potentially take quite a, a while to actually locate here and then once I'm there I could adjust it you know just for that short section but any control which is automation enabled there's actually a much quicker way of just viewing the automation lane for it and it's by holding down the control and command keys and just click on the control in question so there's a low mid frequency gain I'm holding down control and command, there's the high frequency gain, you know, there's the Q for the low mid frequency, and you can see that whenever I click one of these controls, the automation lane which is displayed changes to reflect the one I've just chosen. This also happens when you click on any control really, including volume, so if I want to switch to volume view and I've got this fader visible, click on this, 
and you can see we've now changed to volume view. If I want to view the mute automation, hold down control and command again, click the mute button. So that's a very quick way of accessing automation lanes. This actually brings us nicely onto the next shortcuts, which are for adding breakpoints at the same level as the next or previous. Say for example I've got automation which looks like this, and I want to add another breakpoint here at the same level as that one. So this is really simple to do. Firstly, make sure you've got the grabber tool selected, and then hold down the command and option keys and click, and it will put one in at the same level as the previous. So I'll just do that again. So this one's at minus 22. Rather than just dragging it to that value, hold down command and option and click, and it will be at precisely the level of the previous breakpoint. If I also want to add a breakpoint here at the level of the next one, I can hold down Option and Shift and click. So again, level of the next one is Option Shift. To match the level of the previous one, Option and Command. Here's another useful feature which is handy when you're editing dialogue. Repeat paste to fill selection. So take a listen to this. They weren't angry about the poll. They understood eventually that it was a mistake. They could see that it was rusty. But the police have to play by the so you can hear there that what happens is of course the dialogue has been edited but also at the moment there's a problem where the actual underlying atmosphere cuts off it would be good if we could actually extend this to bridge the gap one way of course would be to select it and duplicate it but you can see that that doesn't exactly match up to the next clip so a better way in this case would be to copy it make a selection that encompasses the entire gap so i'm just going to tab to the end of here hold down shift tab to the next one and then rather than just pasting it I'm going to use repeat paste to fill selection so from the keyboard that would be command option V and it will bring up the batch fades dialog I'm just going to go with the default of 10 milliseconds click OK now you can see the atmosphere which I've copied has precisely filled that gap mistake they could see that it was rusty but the police that would probably require a little bit more editing but the principle is there so once again you copy something, you make a selection, command option V repeats it to precisely fill the selection. Finally, we'll look at some common uses of the shift, option and command keys, or shift, alt and control if you're a Windows user. I'll be describing the Mac shortcuts here, but you can easily figure out how this translates to a Windows keyboard if you know what the equivalent keys are. I'll put these in the video description too. So holding down the option key whilst clicking on a control will revert it to its default position. This works for volume faders, it works for pan controls, and it also works for any parameters within a plugin. So for example, I can hold down the option key and click on these controls and you can see that it's reverted to its default position. Bear in mind that if a track already has automation on it, those controls may jump back to a different position when you actually start playing the session, like this. Steve. To get around this, you would just need to remove the breakpoints if they were no longer needed. Holding down the option key also serves another purpose and it's related to track routing. Say for example I wanted to reroute all of these tracks to a different output, I could hold down the option key, or alt, click, let's just for a bit of variety route this to a bus so we'll go with bus 7 and 8 I'm holding down option now you can see that everything has routed to that particular pair of buses so holding down option in some cases such as routing applies that command to everything however maybe I don't want to do it to everything I just want to do it to a selected range of tracks say these for example in that case you hold down option plus shift and what this will do as you'll see will be to leave everything else intact and only change the routing on those particular tracks. So they're now going to bus 9 and 10. The surrounding tracks which were not selected are going to bus 7 and 8. So option on its own routes everything irrespective of whether it's selected or not. Option with shift will route only the tracks which are selected. Another use of the option command is in removing and adding plugins. If I wanted to remove every single plugin in the session that's on insert A, I could again hold down option and then choose no insert. It might bring up a notification if I've automated stuff. That's fine, I'll just remove it. And you can see that insert A has now gone right across the board, with the exception of the master fader, but on all the audio tracks it has. If I then wanted to replace that with, say, a high pass filter on each of these, hold down option, 
choose the plugin. Let's go with the one band EQ. And then you can see that's now been instantiated across all of the tracks. If I wanted to, let's just get rid of that, do it across all selected tracks. Let's just change the selection to those. You can probably guess what this is. It's option and shift. Click, choose a plugin, let's go something else, that one. And now what you'll see is that will appear on all of the selected tracks. So once again, option applies to all tracks, option and shift applies to all selected tracks. Finally, while we're on the subject of these modifier keys, I just want to talk a little bit about the command key. Let's say, for example, you wanted to adjust this fader. You can see it's currently at minus 6 dB. If I pull it down just really carefully, it's gone to minus 6.2, and then it's at minus 5.9, and that probably wouldn't really matter too much, but if you're really pedantic and you want it to be precisely at a certain value, you see now I can't actually get it to minus 6. Um, if I wanted to get it to an exact value or just have very fine control over it, I could hold down the command key. Now I can adjust it in very small increments and get it precisely to the value in question. So holding down command on a Mac, which is control on a Windows keyboard, gives you fine control of most controls in Pro Tools, faders, plugins, etc. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. There'll be more Pro Tools tutorials on the way soon. Thanks for watching.